I suspect we'll have a few uh, people coming in the room. Welcome. Um, I know there are a number of DCU staff here, but there are quite a number of people who have come from other institutions. It's very good to um, be able to have a couple of quite outstanding keynotes like today, as well as a number of people in Ireland who are doing very interesting things in relation to MOOCs. Um, we're very pleased to host this symposium. Um, I'm co-facilitating it with Eamon. My name's Mark Brown, if you haven't met me before. Uh, I'm the director of the National Institute for Digital Learning, also here at DCU. When um, we were talking about uh, MOOCs and we were talking about whether there was any value in pulling together um, the people who have an interest in this space, we sort of asked, well, why would we do that? And um, I want to spend just the first few minutes, maybe five to ten minutes, just setting the context before we then get into the program, which hopefully you've had a chance to see in your hand. I want to sort of just look at the bigger picture of why MOOCs, this um, term, this acronym that has, in a very short space of time, dominated um, the educational literature, both the popular literature as well as the academic literature, perhaps like nothing else in recent history, certainly in the last 50 years, as we go from next to nothing to suddenly being one of the most um, dominant uh, terms in our discourse. Certainly it has been um, here at DCU because the last couple of days we've been hosting the time of higher education at the University of Summit and you with the Vice Chancellors and Presidents of Universities as I was attending the summit, MOOCs were still um, dominating their thinking. So I'll just spend a few minutes answering this question why. Um, and I'm sure the rest of the day actually is going to grapple with this question of why we're interested in MOOCs and why we can't ignore them and why we do need to engage in some debate. So first and foremost, why this event? Well, it depends who you read and who you believe. And of course, we talk about X MOOCs, C MOOCs, which is more the reflection here. I might just dim up the lights, actually. It's slightly clearer. I need to be able to see you, but um, so depending on who you believe, and of course now we've got spooks or any other kind of acronym that goes with um, the term MOOC. Perhaps it's appropriate, I think, for us to acknowledge, um, since we're having this symposium here in Ireland, uh, and Forbes magazine acknowledges that Alison was the very first MOOC system, um, originating obviously in Ireland and Galway. So um, at one stage we talked about bringing Mike over, but I didn't really think that that would be probably quite as relevant as some of the more academic um, speakers we have over the course of the day. But I did want to acknowledge that Alison still plays quite an interesting role in Ireland as well as um, Europe more generally. Um, and then, of course, a lot of the reasons why MOOCs have dominated our discourse is because this uh, infamous report now published, of course, um, by some authors who really were Pearson's, uh, to be putting it blunt, and the concept of this avalanche um, that was going to be sweeping away higher education. Um, time will tell, of course, you might think that, that we were already past this period and the avalanche didn't happen. Again, I hope over the course of today we'll have some debate about that. And what we're now seeing in the academic literature, although this is now 12 months old, even probably longer than 12 months old, we're seeing a reasonable amount of critique. Uh, this is a fully open access book if you haven't come across it previously. Um, and there's an element in which I know one of the chapters talks about how MOOCs are just another form of neo-colonialism um, in the way in which a curriculum, a certain curriculum, is being pumped to parts of the world. So we're seeing some critique. We um, are seeing some very, very deep critique from people like Michael Peters. If you haven't come across Michael Peters' work, he's probably offering, um, I think, the deepest sort of critique around what MOOCs are and what they're not. And again, um, most of these things are available online. <coughs> I won't go into detail. And then, um, you know, you might think, well, the MOOC debate, the heat has gone out of it, the hype has gone out of it following the Gartner hype cycle, which is a little cliche these days. But um, last week, there was a whole new 
push momentum, a whole new interest in the media, particularly in the United States, but certainly got picked up here in Europe um, around the announcement that Arizona State University, this was in the New York Times, are now going to offer credit for the first year of the MOOC initiative that they've signed up with edX. So they've actually launched what they're calling the Global Freshman Academy. This doesn't work in say fresh person. Um, so I always struggle with saying freshman, but it's not, I think, intended to be a sexist term in that context. Um, so this is quite a significant development. The first university, um, Arizona State, if you're not familiar with Arizona State, they are the largest public university in the United States. 80 to 85,000 students, depending on who you read, uh, 20,000 of those online, and they've gone from basically no online students just over five or six years ago to that kind of uh, size. And they're a very, very well ranked university, very reputable university. Just so happens that um, this video, I think, captures the sense of what they're trying to achieve. Have access to higher education. It's a world amazing possibilities, but unprecedented challenges. The only way that we solve the problem is to unleash the human spirit. How is it that we can provide more people with access? Higher education is, is often marked by its exclusivity, by its selectivity. That model will not stick with the demands of the 21st century. Existing systems of education are insufficient for the demand. And so a combination of technology and the best of the educational principles we've run over hundreds of years is what's required in the 21st century to now extend the gifts of civilization much more deeply and to harness the, the innovative power of people all around. The extension of, of smartphones and cell phones around the globe is happening faster than any technology update has ever occurred in the history of man. And that global network makes it possible for people to communicate with the highest possible fidelity and learn from one another in ways that they've never been able to learn. At Arizona State University, what we seek to do is find as many ways as possible to extend that first year of higher education to as many people as possible in as many different ways as possible. Most students that start college do not graduate. That's a sad state of affairs. This program intends to change that. Education is a right. Edit's mission is to dramatically increase access to education for students all over the world. Imagine if a learner can take MOOCs without any admissions, without an application process, without worrying about the socioeconomic status or their GPA, and if they can pass the course, then by paying a small fee, they can get credit. This will make college a lot more accessible and a lot more affordable than it is today. This program is intended to eliminate those barriers, to take a high school student or someone else and provide for them the freshman year experience in the most advanced, uh, technologically enabled, educationally enriched, uh, deep learning experiences that humans have ever been able to develop with this partnership with ASU and EdX. With a partnership with ASU, they can also now earn credit. This new pathway to college will revolutionize education going forward. Believe that you can achieve, change your own life, and maybe change the lives of many others. Become part of this, this experience. Earn this credit. Begin that journey. So it's too early and probably too cliche-like to say that this is a real game changer, but it's a very, very fresh development in the last week or so. Michael Crow, um, who's the president of Arizona State, uh, published just recently this book on designing the new American education um, university. And Arizona State have been very, very forceful in um, challenging very traditional and elitist views of university education. Um, so I think watch this space of interest already. Some of the social media is starting to critique what this really means, but it's certainly a significant development. Um, in the case of DCU, actually, it's quite a significant development for us because we have a very close working relationship with Arizona State University. They're one of our four, they're really our major US partner 
Um, last year, we launched a um, joint master's degree in biomedical diagnostics, which is being taught fully online. Very, very interesting um, degree because we're co-teaching it, um, and this is a PAX, an example of the model of the future. Not MOOCs, but actually something quite um, really seriously addressing gaps in areas um, that are desperately required in terms of health and medicine education here. Um, maybe towards the end of the day, I might make a little more comment about what DCU is thinking about and what we're planning, but certainly the relationship with Arizona State is significant. Um, I mentioned earlier that the Young University Summit has just been here at DCU for the last couple of days. It's one of the reasons we've been um, placed in this facility. We wouldn't normally be in this facility um, because we just couldn't get into their Helix building. Um, as I also said, the vice chancellors and presidents from all around the world that attended the summit um, were talking MOOCs, and um, many of you will be, of course, familiar with them, probably seen on more than one occasion. Lord David Putnam was one of the final speakers yesterday. So, why the symposium? Um, that's the objective that you have written if you want to have it kind of put more clearly in the pack that you have before you. We think that there's um, real value in maturing the conversation helping to understand where this is taking us. Um, I have to acknowledge um, that this symposium is actually only possible because we're involved in two quite sizable European funded projects related to MOOCs and funding from those projects is supporting this event. Um, and one of those projects is really about maturing the conversation around open and online forms of learning. So that's what we hope to achieve today, um, thinking about impact. Ultimately, if there's one lesson that we can take from the history of new innovation technologies in education is you can't actually predict the future. Um, and MOOCs were not with us uh, in a very short, less than five years ago, we weren't talking MOOCs. Who knows what we're going to be talking about <coughs> in the next five years, and I'd like to think that's a bit of the discussion today, where this ultimately might take us. I've mentioned already the kind of joint online degrees that PCU has already embarked on. Um, that's one pathway, but I think there are many more that we will explore. Probably you've seen that in your own time. We've tried to put a, um, a program together with enough uh, really academic content but opportunities for some discussion and conversation at the same time. We hope the debate that we have scheduled um, just before lunch will be a lively activity. We've deliberately framed it in a way that um, hopefully will really engage with uh, the bigger issues around opening up access to education. And I won't go through any more, you would have looked at that in your own time. Possibly I should have done this right at the outset if there was an emergency in the first few minutes, but there is an emergency <laughs> exit here. Just um, obviously common sense, <coughs> and you have to go out to the right here, my right, or your left, um, as you go out the door to the open area, should anything unfortunate arise. Um, what you will find, probably the most important thing, is in your pack there is a little voucher. It should have three vouchers. For those of you who are here for the whole day, that's to cover for morning and afternoon tea and lunch, which will be out along to this side and then straight out the doors into the student cafe area. Again, we wouldn't normally use that facility. Um, we would be over in our helix for the reasons of the summer. Um, most of you, I suspect, will be able to log in with Edgerow, um, but if you're a guest of, uh, not a, a university, come from a university or a tertiary institute, um, Institute of Technology, there is a guest access available as well, you'll see. Um, the guest one, uh, we didn't write on the handout we've got there, so we'll just come back to that in a moment's time as well, in case you need to get that written down, or you might even want to take a photograph of it, which is something I sometimes do. So, um, unless there are any other questions, I think that's probably enough to set the day. Just, that's right, just to check, are we getting copies of the visuals that we're using? So, um, very good question. Slides will be available. Um, what we're doing at Keep was um, videoing the keynotes. Uh, we can't stream because, again, we had all our commitments tied up with the other event, and so this is a, a problematic route for us to do so. But all the videos will go online. Um, we won't uh, video the afternoon sessions, um, and it's just partly logistics because of the staff that have been tied up with video and the other sessions. You, you are going to do some? Mark, yeah, that's what it's actually open. Okay. Right, the guest one's open, I'm told, so you don't need that password. <laughs>